you. Thank you. Good afternoon. It's a difficult position uh, batting at the end of the lineup here after such uh, excellent speakers before me, but I'll try and do my best. I manage a one-stop permitting and sustainability program uh, at Devon's. Uh, Devon's is about uh, 30 miles west of Boston, and we're a former army base that was closed with the end of the Cold War. Uh, I've translated into hectares for you, so uh, hopefully it makes a little bit of sense. We're 1,780 hectares, but only about 700 are slated for development. The balance is going to be permanently protected open space. Our base was closed in 93, uh, was, went through a closure process in 93, and we took title to it as the state of Massachusetts in 1996. I came on board in 1999. When the base was closed, we went through a public participation process. And this is what the community said that they wanted. They wanted a zero emissions, no waste system similar to a biological community. This is 1993. And it's been my job to try and provide that for them. So we're organized to be a model of sustainable development, basically taking the Brundtland Commission definition of trying to balance economic development environmental protection, and social equity. But I'm also trained as an economic developer. And for an economic developer, innovation has another meaning. It's where you try and create a park where you have multiple disciplines, entrepreneurs, financiers, management workers, all communicating with each other. Uh, where they might not be in a regular industrial park. So it's this communications network that's very important to creativity within a park. And typical of that, you can see Silicon Valley, the Dalian Software Park. But the key concept is communicating amongst players who wouldn't normally be talking with each other. Now, eco-innovation, for me, refers to innovation in products, services, processes, and business models resulting in reduced environmental impact. And according to current thinking, eco-innovation is the key to achieving green growth and the transition from business as usual to a sustainable economy. So, again, I want to go back to sort of natural systems. So, where Devons is located is basically where the coastal plain meets the uh, mountain plateau in Massachusetts. And in ecological systems, boundaries are where there is the most diversity of species. So, I want to think about Think about in nature, where fields butt up against each other, you have more species than you would in the uh, regular field. So it's the edges where creativity tends to occur. And in eco-industrial parks, what we're trying to do is get people from traditionally diverse industries to talk to each other and bring their perspectives to bear on shared problems. So in Devons, we went through a traditional planning process where we identified the environmental resources that were important to protect. And then we directed our development into those areas. You see on the right where it says rail and trade related, here, there's also some aquifers in that same area. 
going through this process allowed us to have a discussion which, in which we were able to inform people that fully serviced rail areas are a scarce resource in the northeastern part of the United States. So we had an agreement where we would put more environmental protection measures to protect the groundwater in this particular district in return for being allowed to develop it. So again, it's uh, having done the planning allows you to have that type of discussion and have a reasonable and rational result. So in an eco-industrial park, you're often trying to get, bring together, as I said, traditionally diverse industries to collaborate around common issues and concerns. At Devons, our park and the programs we manage emphasize creating opportunities for collaboration. So that could look like shared facilities. We have a daycare center with slots reserved for workers. We have a conference center that's available to all of our businesses. We have an International Audubon certified uh, golf course, which is not a chemical dump, but it uses much less chemicals and fungicides and herbicides than most golf courses. We've created a nonprofit, an eco-efficiency center, to manage uh, and work with companies so that the companies can green their operations. So we provide programs to work with each of our companies uh, to help them become better environmental performers. And we set up a number of vehicles to do this, including network meetings with occupational health and safety folks. We do a compliance university because oftentimes the regulatory rules change. And for smaller businesses, they don't always keep up to date with the changes. So we come in and we educate them about all the changes that might impact their businesses. The Green Building Network, and we created an environmental branding and achievement program called EcoStar. And probably our signature program is the Great Exchange, which is sort of like uh, what they do in the UK with industrial speed dating, where we had over uh, 20 businesses attend a meeting uh, and they left the meeting with over 32 exchanges between those 20 businesses. That's repurposing materials, taking byproducts, and uh, finding new uses for them. And again, um, these are results, but it's a small scale. Devon's is more of a light industrial park than a heavy material exchange. It goes everything from packing peanuts that a jet aircraft uh, manufacturing company gets engine parts in. Instead of throwing those out, there's another machine tool company that gets those packing peanuts in a 96-gallon plastic toter. And when one is full, the machine tool company comes over and picks it up and nothing's going into the landfill. Both companies are saving money. That's sort of one approach that we try and do. Simple as that. One example here is Cane's, which is a food manufacturer. They have all of these exchanges going on with about, uh, about 15 or, or 20 different uh, concerns. One of the exchanges is as long as their waste is about 50% oil, and they do uh, salad dressings and the like, a vacuum truck will drive up, suck it out, and they'll make soap out of the product. A government action and regulatory intervention is important as well. Uh, we had a construction and demolition debris ban, and that led to the location of Devon's Recycling as a construction and demolition uh, debris recycling center within our park. We have a food waste ban that's going to go into effect next, in a couple of years. We're piloting uh, a composting program for the restaurants uh, within our park area. We also have uh, a potential study going underway to assess combined heat and power from 
food biomass to energy plant that we hope to locate at Devons. And we have a very generous uh, film tax credit, which has led to a movie studio uh, creating uh, a soundstage at Devons. This is a picture of Devons Recycling, and they came to our park specifically because uh, we bill ourselves as an eco-industrial park. It's 94,000 uh, square feet, and uh, they're very much uh, a very happy uh, company here. Now, we also believe in having housing for our workforce. So we have about 200 housing units that we've deployed within uh, this former army base. Part of it is uh, net zero energy housing. Uh, we have done eight single family and 12 townhouses. The single family is about uh, negative 21 on the home energy rating system, which means that produces all the electricity the house needs and enough extra to power an electric vehicle for 30,000 miles during the course of a year. We've put in place uh, one solar uh, photovoltaic field, and we have a second one under design at the moment. That should provide us about 10% uh, of our electric needs. Again, we're about balancing our approach. We have Bristol Myers Squibb invested $1 billion in locating a biopharmaceutical plant at Devons. We have American Superconductor, which does high-efficiency electrical wires. We have uh, hotels, and uh, uh, the bottom picture here is a, a, an MIT spinoff, Magnamotion, which does maglev trains that's located here. But we also have open space resources that we attempt to preserve. The picture in the center this is the golf course uh, cart path going across a creek. The original plan would have had them take out one of these trees, so they just car curved the pathway to preserve it. And that's sort of the approach that a lot of our businesses take. But we also have, again, that, that social equity side. We have a, uh, uh, again, child care center. This is a, uh, loaves and fishes is a, community food bank where we provide food to the needy and so when the conference center has extra food from hosting a, an event it goes here and this is a battered women's shelter which is uh, built to lead gold uh, standards so these are sort of our goals and our results uh, our goal is to build 8.2 million square feet on our uh, 1,780 hectares. We're at about 4.2 million today. We've got about 3,200 jobs we've created. You can see the uh, private sector investment is 1.4 billion. The states put in about 120 million in the army, which left us a very heavily polluted site has spent about 120 million to help clean that up. And again, uh, for us, it's a holistic approach. And the result has been uh, we've redeveloped this former army base with everything from housing to industries. And we're trying to provide a path forward towards sustainability through our programs to help industries green their operations and our eco-industrial networking opportunities. We think we've reduced the mental distance between firms at Devon, sort of breaking down the silos between separate industries. We have a number of byproduct exchanges in place, but no really heavy material exchanges like some of the examples we've heard before, but I think we need to be thinking about light industrial parks in this context as well. And we're providing shared services to our industries with everything from collective waste disposal and uh, byproduct exchange facilitation to uh, creating a regional household hazardous waste service for 
our citizens that's also available to very small quantity generators who are businesses. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.